Hi there, I'm Sue. If you haven't visited my channel before, I talk about all sorts of things to do with health, I share recipes, and I talk a lot about the carnivore diet. So today I'm going to show you how I make bone broth. Now the, the um, drinking bone broth on a regular basis is a really good idea. And the reason for that is that it's really high in vitamins and minerals, and it's really high in collagen. Now collagen is great for um, your skin and your hair and your nails and your joints and all of those things. So that's why collagen has become such a big deal of late. Um, lots of companies are jumping on the bandwagon, but you don't have to buy that stuff. It's really easy. You can just make your own bone broth and that contains tons of collagen from the, um, the cartilage and that on the bones. And it also contains really good nutrition from the minerals in the bones and it's really good nutrition from the bone marrow. So when you're making your bone broth, the marrow comes out of a lot of the bones and ends up in your bone broth. So if you make bone broth and it's got that, it's got a kind of a brownie film of bits and stuff in the bottom, that's the bone broth. Uh, that's, a, that's the marrow and it's really good for you. So um, let's get started and I will show you how I make my bone broth. It is really, really simple. Alrighty, so today we have some cooked bones. I saved my bones in the freezer. I just put them all in a plastic bag um, until I'm ready to make bone broth. So I tend to have a lot of chicken bones and bones from lamb chops and bones from roasts, that sort of thing. And we just save those up until um, I want to make some bone broth in the freezer and use those to make the bone to make the broth. So in the past, I used to make my bone broth a lot with just raw bones. Now I tend to use a mixture of cooked and raw, um, just because it adds a bit more to the flavour. It's a bit more well-rounded, and that way I'm not wasting all the bones from our cooked meat as well. They get used a second time. So this is some frozen um, beef bones that I'm using in here. This was some beef from one of my son's cows. So nice home-grown grass-fed beef and I'm just going to pop those in um, they're frozen as well this bone broth batch was a bit of a last minute thing and but that's okay um, once I add the water and turn it on it won't take too long for those to defrost so um, once I've got the meat in there then I'll just have a quick look at that so as you can see you've got the raw beef bones and a whole pile of cooked bones in there that are all frozen And now I'm going to add some water. So we distill our water. Um, I'll pop links to some of the things that I'm using below this video so that if you want to check those out on Amazon, you can. Um, but we distill our water. Um, use at least filtered water if you can for your bone broth. That way you're not getting chlorine and fluoride and that sort of thing. I add some apple cider vinegar, just a splash. And this is an essential, but... A lot of people say that it helps to bring some of the minerals out of the bones and I believe that that's probably true so I usually add it and in this large um, slow cooker I add a tablespoon of Celtic sea salt and that seems to be just the perfect amount. It's basically four litres of water that goes into this um, crock pot and so and a tablespoon of salt seems to work really well. So I'm just going to turn that on. I usually leave it on for 48 hours, but I don't have time to do that with this batch. Um, so 24 hours. So this is it cooking away, bubbling away. I had it up a little bit higher than I usually do for longer than usual because I'm. this is a faster batch. And here is a photograph of it once it is cooked. All right, so now I'm, this is the next day, 24 hours later, I'm going to remove the bones from the broth. Um, it is still hot at this stage. You can leave it to cool down a bit, but I'm just in a bit of a hurry because we were going away for the weekend and I wanted to get it done. So... Okay, so that's all the bones out of the bone broth. And at this stage, I quite often let it cool and put it in the fridge to remove the fat if there's too much fat on it. If not, then um, 
I just go ahead and bottle it and for that I need some clean jars which I have here and a ladle and I also have a um, sieve that has a, quite a fine mesh on it and a jug um, to pour the broth into the bottles or into the jars. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so four large jars and the smaller jar because I had a cup of it as well. So about five jars um, that batch of bone broth makes, which lasts me about a week or so. Now this is it once it's been cooled in the fridge and you'll see the fat on the top of that. As I said, sometimes if it's got too much fat, I'll take it off. But when it's got this much, I leave it on and... Um, enjoy that with my bone broth and you'll see that that is like jelly that's good bone broth the gelatine is the collagen and that is what makes it go like jelly when it's cold um, when you're buying expensive collagen you need to know that what you're actually buying is gelatine <laughs> but they just put a different name on it so that's it it's as easy as that um as I said, I'm going to share a couple of ways that I really like using bone broth. So the, I, I, the main way that I, I have it is I heat it up and I just drink it. And it's great. And that's the, really, that's the way I guess most people probably use bone broth. Another way that I use it is I heat it up and I blend either the fat. If I've left the fat on the bone broth, I'll blend that in if there's quite a lot of it because the blending emulsifies it into the liquid and makes it more palatable. You haven't got all that fat sitting on the top. Um, if I've taken the fat off the bone broth, I'll quite often add butter. So I might add a tablespoon of butter into a cup of bone broth um, once it's heated up and then blend it and it makes it really delicious, especially with salted butter, it just adds a bit more flavor. Um, the other way that I use bone broth often is for um, when I'm doing like slow cooked meats. So if I'm cooking, um, stewing like beef or something like that in the slow cooker or even in the pressure cooker I'll often use bone broth in there because it just adds really good flavor and especially if you're on a, a carnival type diet where you're not um, you're trying to not eat plants or not eat as many plants and herbs and things like that that would normally give you a meat flavor um, bone broth is really great for that so that's my video for today i hope you liked it if you um, have any questions or comments please fire away below and if you um, like this video please subscribe and hit the notification bell and also um, share it with anybody who you think might enjoy it okay thank you for watching and i'll talk to you again another day bye